Okay, let's consider this limit right here. The limit as x goes to 3 of x squared equals 9. And let's remember the definition, uh, or, or let's remember what this means in general. The limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l. What does that mean? Well, that means that for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that if this is true, and we'll look at a picture here in just a second. If this is true, then this is true. Now, this is, this is what, when we see this, this is what it's talking about. Now, so let's see how that's applied for this particular problem here. Let's suppose that we're given this, and, and let's just look at a picture here real quick. Let's draw a picture of what's going on. Help us to have a little bit of intuition about it. Okay, so here we go. We've got our graph, and here is three. And what we're t and of course that lines up over here on the y with nine. So so we know that as we approach from the left and as we approach from the right, our limit is going to be nine. Now, what I want to do is I want to kind of play around with this definition and see if we can confirm this limit, you know, or, or at least give evidence to support it. Now, here's how we will give evidence to support it. Remember, the, the definition says, for all epsilon greater than zero, you can find a delta greater than zero. Okay, so let's, let's test that out. Let's suppose, let's suppose that epsilon is equal to one. Okay, if epsilon is equal to one, let's find a delta. Well, if epsilon is equal to one, then that means we go up one from the nine. See? We go up an epsilon, and we go down one. Okay, so this is an epsilon neighborhood here. Now, what we want to do is we want to see if we can come over here and find a delta neighborhood so that every value of x in that delta neighborhood will give me a function value in the epsilon neighborhood. That's what we want to see. So... So let's see here. I need to see what this 10 corresponds to over here. So I had x squared equals 10. Well, that means going backwards, that means that x is equal to the square root of 10. So I'll just put that here, the square root of 10. Now, as far as the 8, x squared equals 9. That corresponds to x equals, or x squared equals 8. That corresponds to x equals the square root of 8. Now, here's what I want to do. At this point, I'm ready to say, okay, let's let delta, let's let delta equal the minimum. Now, here's what we're going to do. The minimum of this distance right here, square root of 10 minus 3, and 3 minus the square root of 8. Okay? We'll let delta be that minimum. Whatever of these is the smaller. Now, it happens to be this one. This distance is going to be less than this one over here. So what we've got here is we've got a delta neighborhood down here. See? I just let delta be the smaller of these, this one. And I go that far above 3, that far above below 3, and I get a nice delta neighborhood here. Now, what this is, what, what is guaranteed is that every x value I cho choose within these little parentheses here. Every x value I choose in here is going to correspond to a function value that's between 8 and 10. See? Between 8 and 10. So you give me an epsilon of 1, I can find a delta that has this property. Every x I choose in this delta neighborhood will give me a function value in this epsilon neighborhood. Now, we chose that epsilon equals 1. I could have played this same game if epsilon were equal to 0.1 or 0.01 or 0.001. The thing is, I have provided evidence that this limit is true 
because you gave me a, an epsilon and I found the delta. Now let's, let's look at this one. Let's suppose that we've got the limit as x goes to, uh, oh, let's say uh, 2 of uh, 2x squared plus 1. I suppose we've got something like that. Now this is going to be uh, 9. That limit is uh, 9. Okay. So 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, 9. Okay. And let's suppose once again I'll let epsilon equal 1. I just do that for simplicity. But any, any that you choose, you know, epsilon point 1, we can still find a delta neighborhood. So here's what I need to do. Okay, so here's 9. I'm going to go up 1 and get 10, down 1 and get 8. Now I want to track, I want to, I want to trace this 10 back down to the x-axis and I want to do the same thing for the 8. I want to trace those back down to the x-axis. Now I don't have to have the graph to do this. Here, here's what we need to do. I need to see well, what corresponds to the 10. Well, let's see here. So here's how we go backwards. We've got 2x plus 1 equals 10. That means that 2x squared equals 9. Divide by 2. And that means that x equals the square root of 9 halves. So down here on the graph, okay, so down here on the graph, here's what we've got. Got a graph here. Here is our uh, 2. Here, and that's our 9. Here's 10 and 8. Okay, so this, this goes back down to the square root of 9 halves. Then for the 8, we do the same thing. 2x squared plus 1 equals 8. That means that 2x squared equals 7. x squared equals 7 halves. Or, finally, x equals the square root of 7 halves. So, so now we've got that this goes down to the square root of 7 halves. Okay, so this is just a little picture. So our delta is going to be the minimum of square root of 9 halves minus 2 or 2 minus the square root of 7 halves. That's going to be our minimum. Whichever of these is the smaller, that's our delta. So what we've done once again with this problem, we were given an epsilon and we found a delta. And it wouldn't matter what that epsilon was. The thing is, for all epsilon, see, for all epsilon, there exists a delta. So we just showed it for, you know, epsilon equal 1. But it doesn't matter what epsilon is. We can still find the delta. Now, what? remember how we traced back. We were told epsilon's 1, so we add 1 and subtract 1 from the 9. So we got 10 and we got 8. And then we unravel it. So I say, okay, well, if, if, if uh, f of some number is 10, what is that some number? So I took 2x squared plus 1 equals 10, and I unraveled it. I subtracted 1, divide it by 2, and then square root it. And that's what gave me this. I did the same thing over here. I said, okay, 2x squared plus 1 equals 8. Well, what is x? So I unraveled it, right? I unraveled it. And then I just determine which one of these is smaller, square root of 9 halves minus 2 or 2 minus square root of 7 halves. And that's how I found my epsilon. Rather, my delta. <laughs> we were finding the uh, delta, not the epsilon. So that's how I found my epsilon.